Well, here the Southern winners, Parramatta taking on the Northern winners, the Northern Beaches. I'm joined here in commentary by Jason Stanton. Jason, outstanding day for touch football. Mate, great conditions, nice and nice and nice and dry. The fields are in great nick, and we've got the two best teams in the state about to battle it out here for glory. As the Renegades, I'll run right to left on your screen. <coughs> I'll take and go for the line with the link. Quickie, the big dive, and there's good touch and good defensive set from the Parramatta Reels. Good start, and referee Deacon Cameron all over that, starts us off. Yeah, it'd be interesting uh, how these two teams said, Lynn Nathan, last week we saw Parramatta... Oh, two weeks ago, Parramatta knock off Hills. Very dominant all-round team display. So that probably favourites going into this game one. Renegades, almost like an upset victory come from behind against Central Coast. So they've, they've probably got the momentum, but I think Parramatta will probably be looking to settle in a bit quicker if they can. And a fortunate uh, penalty to Parramatta there. I felt like the player lost control of the ball. The referee, Carmody... Uh, in a good spot, so he calls it the way of Parramatta and the Renegades will be forced to defend as Parramatta get an opportunity down at the line with Rawali working with Grosvena. Grosvena now with the ball, gives it away to Crowley and Crowley plays it, he goes right through the middle, does he? Back to Crowley and that's a try. Parramatta with a 3-2 lead, Derby Crowley scores. A very simple play, Jason, but effective. Yeah, it's beautiful and it, it's, it's easy to sort of undervalue or underestimate how how nicely well that was executed. It looked like it was going to be a quick release at one point. Then the ball runner looked like he was going to run a sweep. So they gave almost like two bluffs. He came through the middle um, of the splitter and they picked up a number. Renegades just didn't see it coming. So it look, looked pretty easy, but that was beautifully executed by Parramatta. Great start. Almost a perfect start. And once again, for those of you tuning in here, the 18s boys grand final, the 3 2 scoring system as we go for the out ball and the striking defence from Braden Wickman. And good defensive set from Parramatta. They get the stop as they would have wanted, but the 3 2 scoring system. So the first try to Northern Beaches is three points every try. Uh, sorry, to Parramatta is three points, and every try from here on in will be two. So this will be interesting to see how it plays out. I think so. Renegades, uh, Renegades are a bit more almost look like firepower. Some of those really explosive plays come in the touch uh, into the into the scoreline. Parramatta ran these sorts of lines in their in their previous grand final, just nice and smooth. So interesting to see the different opinions on on you know different people thinking how this one's going to play out. Uh, the Renegades will look to attack here, and they play the ball, and that'll be Richie picks it up, and Richie with the ball now, and he works with Borm and. They go out the wing, what a line from the winger. Oh, fantastic play. Steps off the left, takes that gap inside the winger who was flat-footed, and the Renegades hit back. Mate, there was just individual class there, and that's what we're just talking about. We've got these team plays of Parramatta, the nice and smooth stuff, with that dynamic individual class of Renegades. It's really a contrast of styles here and that's a, that's a great hit back and almost unexpected a little bit against the run of play. Yeah, the, the play appeared to be dead there and all it took was a real sharp line and still not entirely sure who it was up the middle but they've created space he's dropped that there Maroon uh, And that's the same play there for, for those with an astute eye same play they just scored off and they did get the number as well so I'm sure you'll see that again from Parramatta and just, just sort of, just to circle back a bit about these contrasts and styles. Just sort of walking across the fields this morning, just people adamant, you know, oh, Parramatta's the best, Renegades the best. Um, I had a quite explosive chat this morning for, with uh, George Aziad at Bankstown. He was adamant Renegades had too much firepower for the team play of Parramatta. I was sort of leaning towards Parramatta in terms of my tips. So it's definitely polarised the touching community. It certainly has, and. Referee Carmody wants him on that exact blade of grass right there, and that's where they end up. And it's a good shooting set here from good hands from the winger. Good shooting set here from the Renegades, and Renegades really getting off the line here. And as, as we said, they stole it last week from the Jaws. They stole victory from the Jaws of defeat last week. The, Rene the uh, Renegades against the Dolphins. It was an absolute classic at, uh, at Dubbo. That, 
And here we are today. We meet on the biggest of stages. Last week was a big stage. This is the biggest. So. And referee Cameron is off the mark. And Coach Wong and Berryman won't be happy with that, dismissing the basics on that occasion. Yeah, a few errors there. And just, just a quick note uh, on the referees, Nathan. So uh, I know the referees have an overall team, like a big unit, so not necessarily the, the referees that had the grand final in Dubbo or the grand final in Wagga are necessarily here today. It's, it's a whole team. I think I'm not, I don't remember seeing uh, these ones last week, I don't think. No, this is a completely different team, mate. So for both of the grand finals, so completely new refs, I think, um, for this this tournament. I know a lot of the referees preparing for uh, National Touch League this week and very much like yourself, I believe. So. Yeah, so it should be interesting the way they open this one up. I, I remember, uh, I think I called a game with uh, referee Emma Bleasdale in the Men's Premier League and she was exceptional at keeping the teams apart. So, uh, yeah, I think that's a pretty good selection for today along with um, who we've got, Carmody and Cameron. Uh, so Renegades here, down by one. On a 3-2 scoring system, they pick it up. There's Bourne, a long pass out, and it finds the ground. The Eels' defence, they're not really challenged, but that running play of the Renegades is something that will get them moving forward quickly and backpedalling quickly, I should say, for the Eels. As I'll try and get them at sixes and sevens as we come up, the one-handed pick up from Abu Tumar. And there he's again, the charge on the field, there's Maroon, the ball's picked up, and he steps, Takchi, and the referee, Cameron, he's got play through, they're going to score, referee Deacon Cameron, Prince Guyane scores, and it was that simple, Daniel Takchi picks it up, gets through, and they extend their lead. Outstanding play there from Parramatta, real superb stuff, and Maroon and Taxi, we call those names so many times. The little the cedar combination, that sort of stuff gets living on Coach Michael Musa. Very excited. Maroon and Taxi. How about the speed? I don't think they uh, they just couldn't get back on side. And, you know, a pretty good call from uh, referee Cameron. Yeah, the rene Renegades play definitely stopped uh, a little bit short. And referee Cameron picked that up as they go the sweep. That's a sharp play there. And they go the phase and it falls off the ground and he steps in the big dive. And it's John Butros there with the touch, but some sharp play. Max Davies there working around with Charlie Boyle, and Boyle and Davies will be there on last as it goes through. Sorry, it's last now, and there's space. He dive. I think he's got it. Has he? No. That's a great touch. I think it's Butros again. That was very close. We need a super slow-mo on that one. That could have gone either way. That was great tight. Play. Referee Bleasdale in very, very good position there. Makes the call. They go forward, Rawali now, he gets it up with Os Oscar Gray, the club captain, he picks it up, Gray gives it to Rawali, long pass out, oh that's champagne, is it? No, forward pass, but that was sharp and Liam Bissett denied from the long ball from Rawali. A bit of a lost opportunity because I don't think it needed to be like that fine, a pass, Rawali and the Parramatta, it was open to mark, it was just a straight forward three on two to the winger but they probably tried to sort of maybe just a bit quick or maybe you know push it a bit hard didn't really need to be uh, squeezed out so lost opportunity there for Parramatta. The one thing we also spoke about this morning was the adrenaline and the nerves and uh, of the likes of you know being in a, in a national final or a state final sorry it's you know obviously a big big event and we've still got last year the ball's been passed out there's razzle dazzle here from the Renegades he steps, he goes over, this passed away and they can't handle it. Referee Cameron says late. But yeah, the, the fact that we're here in a, in a state final, the, the opportunity is a lot of pressure as well that comes with it. Obviously, there's a lot of training that goes into these sorts of events. It's great to win your, your conference, but the whole state to be the champion of, of the state is obviously important as well. Yeah, it's a, bit of, um, it's, you know, it's a bit of a mental reset as well. Or, you know, some of the players, it's a bit hard to have that level of maturity yet play your whole weekend tournament, you win lots of, you know, excitement and celebration and you've got to reset and come into today and for those that uh, sort of haven't been across the detail, this is not a one-off game, is it, Nathan, for the title? No, it's the best of three, this is game one we've already had uh, the 12 boys we've got uh, the Sharks have taken out the 12 boys series already, so that's a win to them and the 14's girls the Hills Hornets, too good for the Renegades in the, in the Taylor Cup and the so Bielo Cup, the 12 boys, the Sharks, state the win in that series. And 
This is game one of the 18s boys and it's currently Parramatta 5, Northern Beaches 2 and every try from here and in will be worth two so there won't be a drawn game at the end. As Davies, he steps and he gives that flick pass and the attempted bat on. Just lacking a little bit of execution there but the Eels now get a chance and it's great hands by Bissett on that wing. And they'll head towards this box and this is one of my favourite parts where all the players tread out and they go away from there pretty quickly and they go forward here. The driving pattern from the Eels. The Foreman picks up and it's a very good touch. And change of possession here for the Renegades and still over half a game to go here. Game one, the 18th boys in Northern Beaches, Re Renegades, the winners of the Northern Conference, taking on the Parramatta Eels who defeated Hills. And the 18th boys down at the Southern, down at Wagga Wagga and a little bit lost there as they head to the box, the Renegades. They'll be looking to go a lot more direct and they do. There's last, Bleasdale. Bourne picks it up. He's offside and a bit of a shadow, but he gets there, yes. Referee Bleasdale correctly calls play on. I'm going to assume we'll come back for a penalty, but we won't. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I, I lost that one. I, I wanted to sort of um, unpack a little bit about the strategy, you know, because this is very different for the, t for the coaches with um, Coach Wong and Phillips in that. You've got that three-day tournament where you're building up. You don't really look a lot at the opposition too much. But this is now, you've had time to reset. You've watched the, the other grand final on Bar TV. Now you've rocked up. You're in a three-game format. So it's totally different. And it's sort of almost like 18's boys touch being accelerated into men's touch. You've got to have strategy. You can't just turn up and do the same thing. And um, so one of the things I've, I've already picked up on that I think the teams are going to probably, I think they'll have to change throughout the day, is that they're... Get into the sub box way too early. Is that Rawali there? So Rawali, he's got play through, and Sergi's claiming the touch, and referee Carmody calls him off, and Parramatta extend their lead. We're at a 7 2 ball game. So, so looking at that at home, the Renegades are going to need three tries here in. Well, oh, still plenty of time left on the clock. We're just still over halfway left in this game. So, time's not an issue just yet, but it will be. Uh, come around about seven and a half minutes to go for needing three tries, but the game's that quick, Jace, that anything can happen, and they'll be looking to hit back now. Yeah, I think, I think I think there's definitely plenty of time, but I think they need to adjust the way they're playing a little bit. What I was trying to mention about the sub boxing is is the, the sort of like sub in as though they play three or four games. They're, they're, they're coming off really early, like you know, ten metres on their side and halfway. They're sort of almost in a rush to get off, um, and this is a, a three-game format where you should be fresh, jumping out of your skin. You really got a power over at halfway. So I think that's something that the teams will probably adjust throughout the three games is probably look to sub a little bit better than what they've they have to start off here. They dive for the line, the winger. Does he get him? No, they say ball down, and that's Evan Flynn. He strikes back for the Renegades. And the crowd, unfortunately, you won't see much of the crowd on the uh, on the footage, but the crowd here is over on our side, the eastern side, and it's three or four deep here in the shade. They're taking advantage of the beautiful trees over here, and um, yeah, the Renegades crowd. You, you might have heard in the in the background there the, the noise after that try from Evan Flynn, and it was just a little bit too quick from that uh, from Evan Flynn there. I think so. Same play again, third time runner. But now this is the option that Parramatta's running. Too classy. Too classy. Andre. Yeah. Sahu, I think, in the corner. And that's the same play we've seen three times now where we've got the almost looking like the quick, like, you know, like the quickie, then the link running between the gap, between the splitter, and running options both sides. So, again, great adjustment there from the Parramatta crew. Yeah, Oscar Gray, the club captain. As the Renegades, a so 9 4 the score. Renegades hit back last time, they get back to the three try lead. They go forward, a long pass there's Flynn. And I, think, I, think, I think the last few tries, Nate, they're probably. Maybe not soft, but I mean, I wouldn't. I, I think like the D would probably like to have that again. I think they could be saved. I don't think they were, um, uh, you know, necessarily that explosive. I think maybe a bit of a, a bit of a dip in the mental concentration uh, for the for the both teams. I think the last probably five ten minutes. As the Eels now hold on there in defence and 
Oh, that's some good hands. And it was backwards. A very good call from Deacon Cameron there. That, and he gets it for not getting over the ball. But that was very good. The coaching staff here are not happy with the transitions through the box here from the Parramatta side. As they go for another attack here, the Renegades. And here they are, there's Flynn and referee Cameron said, you've got to be moving forward here. And just under 10 minutes left on the clock. The time is not the issue at the moment, but it can be. Flynn gets a quickie. They've got spacey dummies, gets back inside, and the phase is probably on, but he overran it after he passed the ball there. Evan Flynn, and they'll go again, and there's Baum, the captain, Oliver Baum. He gets it, looks for the trail. He's got speed, but it's a great touch on the line. Darby Crowley, the uh, first try scorer of the game. And Renegades a little bit one-dimensional at the moment, just with the statics as Baum and Cart and the Renegades, they are. They're just sort of looking for that static and just hoping for the easy one, aren't they? I think so, and that's 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 part of that adjustment. And it is difficult for the players, mate, because they go through a tournament where they're able to score those tries. Renegades would have scored against most teams in the Northern Conference with that sort of attack. But you come here against Parramatta, a class outfit, one through to fourteen. You've got to come up with something a little bit stronger than that, and that's where I think the strategy comes into this into this format. Well, as you said, they sort of it's, it's a state of origin format. It is the three, the best of three, and it needs to be looked at that. As you said, that game plan, how much does it change? So for Parramatta, they effectively get an extra week. So as a coach, would you be looking to go for a bit more of a middle middle sort of like the old arrows? Um, for those of you that are not aware of the arrows or new to touch, or you're just watching the, the nephew or, or brother or cousin or something on TV on the screen here, that the arrows plays pretty much the middle. Two middle players just go up and down the field and they just work either side with each player. Um, whereas the game now in this State Cup sort of format, everyone sort of looks to the, the box uh, pretty much every set. And that's what the both sides here at the moment are doing that at the moment. Yeah, they are. Yeah, so if you look at your screen, generally both teams will be um, going like Parramatta will be driving towards the bottom of the screen so they can do their substitutions. Renegades would be going to the top there, as you see Ruali setting up. So generally what... What we're saying is that when you're not playing, you know, four games in a day and you have a bit more petrol in the tank, Rivali again, short side. Oh, he scored. He's dropped it, I think. Has he grounded that? I'm a long way away. The referees are on the spot. And what are they going to say? Referee, please, they'll send him back with a touch. Sorry, Jace. Yeah, so um, generally when you're a bit fresher, you want to sort of drive more down the middle of the field. Sort of like mid up your screen right down the guts and really try and hurt the whole defensive line. Is That's that down, like Maroon. Too sharp. It's too sharp. And if you're at home, if you're a young boy or girl at home, uh, you know, taking notes on this one, you, you could do worse than copy Luke Maroon. Ball in two hands, looking like he's going to throw long, could be throwing short. No, it's a dive. And that's a really big uh, skill that you've got to have, you know, to, to have a really good career in touch. He's always have that ball in two hands, Nathan. Yeah, it was very sharp from Maroon. He he went that split of play. And Parramatta, they're just... The good thing for Parramatta here, Jason, you'll you'll appreciate this, is with Parramatta, they've sometimes in touch, and it's particularly younger, you know, you see probably men's 20s is a big dive from uh, Tash Thompson, is that they'll, they'll do something that's successful and then they'll go away from it. Whereas Parramatta, they just keep running. Keep running that, that split of play as they have. And the big dive. And Cameron says no. But Parramatta have been successful with it. It's 11, five tries or four tries. And they've been very successful running that same play. Yeah, and again, that's a little bit of that maturity that, that happens is, you know, you don't want to do variety just for the sake of variety. So Parramatta have run the play, run the play, you know, that where the link's coming between the middle, uh, the two middles dumping. Then they've run the option on the play. Then they've gone back direct again. So you're right, is that they... they they're keeping the same style with different options, not just changing their whole attack method just for the sake of it. So I expect Renegades will be a lot stronger in game two. I expect both teams to be driving through this midfield a lot better. Um, they are going to make corrections. All these players are fresh here. This is just some tactical changes. And Coach Nathan Wong and Harry Berryman from the Renegades, they're very experienced campaigners. They're going to be really picking up what they need to do. And the Renegades at the moment, obviously playing with... Only 11, 11 players uh, now, so um, yeah, there'll be some reinforcements a little bit later 
today. So, as you said, for game two, which will take place here on the stadium a little bit later this afternoon. That'll be at 1 p.m. So, no doubt those the fresher legs might might help the Renegades come a little bit later this afternoon. But um, based on that, here as they go through Flynn to attack at the line, Flynn will step. He looks to get back. He got under. He got under. I think. It, oh, it's a good touch. Had to be a good touch. Draws Vina. But the how, how much of a challenge, regardless of the players that aren't here, how much of a challenge is at 11-4 psychologically? If Parramatta are lucky and can get one or two more tries, can have a, a big psychological advantage. Oh, that's clever. That's clever. In behind him. And the Renegades. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about the psychological. That's a fantastic play by the Renegades. In and behind. And still, they need three tries, the Renegades, in four minutes. Anything can happen. Yeah, and you were just talking to it. Is that they, Renegades, that, that's really important try because it's, it's sort of sending a message to Parra, we can score. Every time you drop in concentration, we're going to put one on you. And this is where I think Parramatta are going to have to, even though they look like they've got the win here for the most part, they're going to have to make a correction before game two because Renegades, you know, a couple more players coming in will be fresh. Plus, I'm expecting the coaches to make that correction around midfield. Renegades are going to throw a lot more at Para in game two than what you've seen here in game one. And Gray goes long, and this time with Splitter, they go the different option on the Splitter play, and they defend it well, the Renegades. And they've got to go the length of the field here, and the good little passive a little tip on the, That's a good decision from the referee. There's plenty of pressure there applied, and the penalty given. And the Renegades, three and a half on the clock. What can they do? Maybe another one just to sort of put that in the back of Parramatta's minds coming into game two. The other thing too, when you're looking at the strategy, is that we've mentioned, I think you mentioned a couple of times, Parramatta's play, the one that they've hurt them a lot with. So Renegades have to handle that in game two. They can't afford to give up three, four tries on tries on, on, on the same move. Well, Wong so and, it's pretty clear, the Wong, game plan. Wong and Berryman will no doubt have that list. A little boy play, dummies. Oh, that's clever. That is clever play. Jersey 25 with the try. And this is, a, this is that one where the Parramatta, because the, they've got the scoreboard on their side and they're up by a bit, you know, they, they sort of drop in concentration a bit, but that's giving Renegades momentum for game two, Nathan, because they're like, okay, they've got two tries now and they're gaining in confidence. Um, that last one they scored, we're starting to see more of that in the game. I'd, I'd, I'd like to see even more of it. It's, whether you call it a boy or a trail or, you know, the, the, the ball carry is charging at the line and then the off, the his support runner is almost following him, almost behind him, a trail or um, a follow type play, depending on what you want to call it. But, yeah, there's a lot of that coming to the game. Very sharp here. And they're going to go to the link quickie, Rawali, and they go to the outball. There's plenty of space. And just that execution there from Buntros and... There's still plenty of time here. 11-8, if they can grab one at the end of this set, but they need to find some energy here. They're looking a little weary, the Renegades, but that's a great run, a great play up that side by Richie. And look at him go, the big fella. He's down that far line. Here comes Davies, sweeping on the field. They're going to get the chance to attack. Davies gives the ball away. Here's Flynn. He's been in everything. He's working now, working now with Boyle. Boyle and Flynn on the attack. Standing, dancing. Boyle picks it up. Looks for Flynn. It looked like he was going to come under a little bit of confusion there. It's last play. But it's a great set. Yeah, great signs here for Renegade. They're really finishing the game well. They're really finishing the game well. Am, am I able to say para favourites game one, Renegade's favourites game two? Is that allowed or what? Oh, I think you can say whatever you want. You've got really the microphone, like the Jason. This, so. Well, that momentum, but it's still a minute's probably not enough time. I'm happy to be proven wrong, but they're going to need to score. In the next three touches here, as Flynn goes there, goes for his offside, Oscar Gray, and he has scored. Oh, it's not over yet. Don't touch the sets. Don't touch the dial. Don't go anywhere. It's 11-10. Just under a minute to play, and I'll give you that tip. Parramatta are going to be in no hurry to get back to halfway. Yeah, they've really, really gone away a little bit, Parramatta, from what they were doing well in that first 10 minutes. And I know we've got that first try, you know, being worth more, but it's, it's five scores each. Renegades, have, you know, they've put on two or three in a row here. They've got a lot of confidence. They've got a lot of momentum. And Parramatta are going to be doing well to... <laughs> they've just got to control the ball for 20 seconds and get out of it, go and recoup and try and work out what went wrong. They go to the split of play, and they're looking to put the nail in the coffin. Rawali steps off the left. 
And they just need to kill the play. That'll be fourth. And Rawali looks back at the clock. Gray now standing there. They've got to try and just kill the clock here. But Rawali stands. This is smart play. That's smart from the Eels. And Maroon with the ball. He gets touched on last. I hate to see an intercept from a long ball. That's not a bad pill. Looks forward. Referee Bleasdale saying forward. So they're going to get one touch here, the Renegades. What can they do? Who's going to be the player? They don't need to try, Nathan. They need a miracle. <laughs> They've got to go 70 oh, metres with zero 94 clock. state of origin. Where's Renoff? Meninga, they go the switch. The switch play. They're going to have to throw it around willy-nilly. Oh, out the back. There's Richie. Is he going to take it? Save his energy? No, they go the switch again. He tries to take him on, and that's all she wrote. Game one goes to the Eels. Jason, as you said, game two could be anything. Yeah, I, I think, like I said, I'm going to back Renegades in the second one, but I think Parramatta, I think they're going to have to come up with something a little bit different for game two. Renegades, I think, clearly know what they need to do. When you saw that, as they settled into the game, they dominated that last eight minutes. Lots of confidence going into it. So game two is going to be an absolute cracker. Eels taking that one, 11-10, taking in and... We've got Manly versus the Brindies next in the 18s, girls. We'll take a short break and be back with you here live on New South Wales Touch TV.